For our next big idea, I'd like to introduce you to a friend from Palo Alto, California, who's joining me on the dais. Hi, Henry. My name is Henry Evans. I am a mute quadriplegic speaking to you from my bed in Northern California. I had a stroke 12 years ago, which is why I sound like R2-D2. It has often been said that if history doesn't repeat itself, it frequently rhymes. That is certainly true of the history of technological and social change in America. To begin, think back 100 years. Technological advances, like the airplane and the automobile, were rapidly changing our perceptions of time and space. Oh, and on a side of note, 100 years ago, my stroke would have killed me. Now fast forward a century. Modern medicine has saved my life, and new technologies are once again changing our perception of space and time. Now the disabled like me, the elderly, and those people who are otherwise unable to travel are once again being given the opportunity to fully participate in society. By virtue of remote presence devices I was recently able to effortlessly travel all over the world while I was lying in bed. This represents both a remarkable technological achievement and a significant leveling of the social playing field for all types of bedridden people. Let me give some concrete examples by briefly describing two such devices and their role in this historic societal transformation. The first device sits on the shoulder of someone you want to remotely visit, hence the name Polly, and swivels around in many directions under remote control by the user. It can be used by the bedridden to accompany and converse with friends and family on excursions. You hear what they hear and see what they see. Think about the implications for bedridden grandparents who want to be there for their grandchildren's the precious moments. such device is the beam by suitable technologies. By virtue of the beam, I was able to tour museums in Mountain View and San Francisco from my bed in Palo Alto. Beam is currently a commercial product and is the closest thing to walking I have experienced since my stroke. I was accompanied on some of the trips by newly found quadriplegic friend, Mandris, who participated from his home in Lithuania. When using beams, we were literally able to wander freely around the museum, using our head movements to drive. We didn't even run anybody over. We missed them. We were able to interact with visitors and learn about the exhibits. These are some pictures of me wandering through the Dion Fine Arts Museum in San Francisco with Charlie Castillo. Famous museums in San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Chicago, London, England, New York, St. Petersburg, and Paris have expressed an interest in installing remote presence devices. And one of the advantages of traveling by remote presence devices is there's no jet lag. This isn't just an idea. It's happening now. So if you know any elderly or bedridden people, give them the gift and tell them that by 2024 they will be able to travel the world anytime they want. It reminds one of what Morpheus asked in the Matrix. How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Please join us in making the whole world accessible once again to bedridden, elderly and underprivileged people with this exciting new technology. Help us spread the word. Thank you.